Hey guys, Cam back here in the Battler Workshop and welcome. Well, I was given a, a throwaway advice, I guess I'd call it, uh, from a mate of mine. Um, it was uh, an Erwin Record. Now, Record were in their own right, uh, a voice manufacturer here in Australia, and a good quality voice too. Uh, they've now been taken over by Erwin, uh, made in China, and they have become very Chinesey. Um, the screw out of that particular vice and the nut, they've both stripped out. If you have a close look at the screw on this, very, very fine thread. It's not what I call a power thread. Uh, it is an acme form, well, a rounded acme form, I guess. Uh, it's 8 TPI, it's a two start, which makes it a 4 TPI lead on this. But as I said, far too fine to work as a power screw or a power thread for the types of service a vice has to do. Now, they did try and get some spares for these, but uh, very difficult. You have to go through the franchisee, franchisee uh, in your area. In our particular case, it was Bunnings. Uh, I did contact Bunnings and they had no idea what I was talking about. So uh, I think it's time to make up a brand new screw and a brand new nut. I'm going to do this as a, as a 5 TPI, um, make it a much, much coarser power thread uh, to enable it to take the sort of conditions um, and loads that a vice does have to take. So we're gonna kick off on the lathe first. So I'm just gonna do the screw out of mild steel. This particular nut here is done out of cast iron, but I'm gonna do it out of aluminium bronze. It's gonna be very tough stuff to machine, but it's gonna give a very, very durable nut, and I wouldn't expect to see it fail, certainly not in my lifetime if I look after it. All right, guys, as I said, let's head over to the lathe, and, uh, and we'll make a <laughs> All right, I've just quickly knocked up a, a drawing of what we're going to be making up. So this is how it's going to look, uh, as opposed to the original, which was rounded off with the tang at the bottom there. It's got a solid pin that, uh, that positions it, and uh, it's just to uh, orientate it in place. And the thrusting has taken off that face there up against the plate. So we're just going to knock this up as a squarish type arrangement with some, uh, some chamfers. Uh, the material um, will get the shape out of this just, so uh, we should be okay with that. All right, let's have a look at our block of uh, bronze that we're going to be using, and we'll make a start. All right, I've done a cut out of the shape of this nut that uh, we're going to do. This is a bit of scrap. It's either alley bronze or manganese bronze, I'm not sure, but uh, either way, this is very, very tough stuff to machine. So uh, I can just fit that shape of that nut 
in there so we're going to set this up on the bandsaw now and I expect and I have cut this stuff before but um, some stage through here I'm going to have to change the blade out because uh, it will get blunt all right let's get that set up in the bandsaw and we'll get that uh, cut out and we can start some milling start knocking it off. all right so this is after nearly 15 minutes of cutting I only really scratch the surface. I've added some uh, weights, as you can see, to try and put it away onto the blade. But this stuff is as hard as nails. All the stuff will work for it'll be ideal for a nut. Alright, so we've been nearly half an hour, and it's probably about three quarters of the way through. Alright, and here's that uh, lump of bronze cut off. We'll get this set up in the mill and we'll start uh, getting some sort of shape into it. Okay, well, I'm going to use a squaring technique that I saw off of Joe Pye, and I think everyone knows Joe Pye. Um, and it enables you to get five sides squared up in the one machining operation and then allowing the, the, the last one. So what we're going to do, facing cutter over the top, square it up, end mill around each side, and we square that up. And that gives us a good starting base to be able to, um, to get this to size and squared and finished off. So uh, once we do that, we'll flip it over and then I can machine the last little bit to thickness. Right, let's get a start. Alright, so what we're going to be doing is just going around the perimeter of this with an end mill just to square it up. Uh, we can bring that back to size and this will be a final machining point on this one as well. We've only got the front face that we'll need to, uh, to get back and the top face which is held by the jewel. So it enables us to get five sides squared up which makes it a lot easier to finish the job off. Right, you get the idea of what we're doing here with uh, all five sides, getting them all squared up with each other. I'm just going to go around now and just uh, do the spring passes just to make sure that we've got uh, everything dead square and straight. So uh, I'll just do a couple of passes around for that and uh, we'll flip it over. We can start uh, machining it into size. All right, well, that's got five sides all squared up. Next job we're going to do is we're going to take the nut back to width. So we're going to Machine back there, and then we'll take it back to length. We'll machine off there. And then we can start shaping it out. We've got a 45 degree to put on either side and a step in to do. So we'll get set up and we'll get them, uh, them knocked out. And just a point to note too that uh, I always cut into the fixed jaw, so the force is always going back towards the column of the uh, of the mill, as I said, into that fixed jaw. All right, so that's the, the nut brought to the envelope dimensions, the size. Um, we can now start knocking the shape in. I've, I've run this through with my tri square and uh, yeah, it's spot on. So very happy with that. Dead square on uh, all six sides. All right, we'll get this marked out, and uh, as I said, we'll get it uh, in the back into the vise, and we'll start uh, putting some shape into it. So that's the step machined and unfortunately I'm not going to quite clean up on that but it's a non-working part of the nut so it's not going to matter. 
So what I'll do now is uh, put the 45s on, so we'll clean that off, put the 45s on, and then we can set up for boring the hole. Now, I bore the hole maybe about half a mil shy of its uh, minor diameter. Uh, that allows me something to clock up to in the lathe, and I'll do the final bore in the lathe to size before I start cutting the... All right, well, that's our nut port to final shape. I'm happy with that. As I said, we've not quite cleaned up down there, which isn't going to hurt us because it's not a working part of the part of the nut. And we do have to take a bit of a leaf out here, so it's going to be a lesson a lot further again. All right, well, we'll set up and we'll get this bore done, hole drilled and, uh, and bored, ready to set up in a lathe to uh, do our final bore and start cutting our thread. Alright, I managed to get this drilled out, but um, the 18mm drill that I started with, I absolutely shredded that. Might have more to do with the uh, cheap quality of the, of the drill more so, but this is very, very hard stuff, and I was able to finish that out with a 16mm drill. All I want to do at the moment is get this bored so that I've got a true and parallel bore that I can then clock up to in the lathe to uh, final the bore, finalise the bore out to a 20mm, which is the, uh, the minor diameter, and uh, we can start cutting the threads. <laughs> I'll keep machining that out to the 18mm and we're finished and, uh, and we'll bring you back. Righto, one whole board out to 18mm. Um, right, we'll get this set up in the, uh, well actually, yes we'll get this set up in the lathe next to get the bore done and then I'll cut the relief on the underside of this afterwards. I want to be able to have full jaw contact while we're doing the, the setup for the uh, for the threads. And so we'll take it out, put it back in the mill and then cut that relief in. But so far, looking good. A difficult bit about the start. All right, guys, when I've got to do threading tools at a um, fairly accurate level, um, I offhand grind as close as I possibly can, just using the fish tail gauge to get the angle right, in this particular case 29 degrees uh, included angle. Um, when I've got that fairly close, I then set it up in my surface grinder, in this particular case we set over at uh, 14 and a half degrees, and I just lick along the edge there. And I do that on both sides, once I've done that lick, I've got a bit of a land, I then go back and offhand grind that land right back so we're back on a knife edge. So this is really just setting the angle for me and I can follow that very easily on the uh, on the grinder while I'm off, uh, while I'm doing the, uh, the offhand grinding. So at the moment that's set at 14 and a half degrees with my little Wixby. Just done that up and it's gone to 14.7 so I'll just adjust that back as I said we do that on both sides all right I'll get on to giving this a lick and we'll get that uh, get that land sorted out <laughs> Hopefully you can see that, you can just see that little land that's uh, that's come up nice and shiny. So all I do now is I offhand grind that up and just take that land out. And it gives me a guide to get the angle exact, well as close as exact as I can get. Alright, we'll do the same on the other side. We'll get this tool ready to go. Right, right so we've made a, a start on threading the nut now. So we're just going to take our time with this. I'm not going to film uh, all of this, uh, I just want to focus on <laughs> Getting a thread cut because this is a very tough material to to, uh, to machine into.
So once again, I need to keep this uh, engaged into the uh, lead screw the whole time and, and reverse it out. All right, we'll come back when we're starting to, uh, to fit the screw. All right, we now have a screw that fits quite well. got just the tiniest little bit of rock in it. I had to take around about an eighth hour side cut, which wasn't too bad. You expect to do a bit of side cutting for the final fitting. But the uh, major diameter, the root diameters were, uh, were spot on. And that does screw all the way up quite nicely. So. Not a lot of rock in it, but there is just a little bit there. I'd rather have this a little bit firm to start with uh, in the vise than, uh, than too loose. Um, that does up very, very nicely just with your, just with your hand. Alright, we'll call this one done. What I've got to do now is just cut the relief in that tang and then uh, drill the hole to fit the silver pin. We'll get that position, get that drilled, and then we can put the vice back together once we get the uh, handle hole drilled and the, uh, and the handle refitted. As you can see, that's, uh, that's a nice fit, so I'm happy with that. Alright, let's get it out and let's have a proper look at it. Alright, so this is the final result. So we've got the nut out. It's quite a long thread on this thing. And, uh, as you can see, it runs uh, very easily. All right, very happy with that. Just cutting a very thin slither, slither of this uh, aluminium bronze to make up a, uh, a washer for the screw acting on the front of the vise. Almost there, this has taken nearly an hour just to cut this section, it's just tough stuff. <laughs> I know I've got a blunt blade now. Okay, so here's the beginnings of the washer for that uh, slither that we uh, that we cut on the bandsaw. So I've used uh, my vertical bandsaw to uh, to get that roughed out and just stuck it into the uh, in the disc sander to, uh, to get it reasonably round so we can sit that on the four jaw. Get it squared up, give it a lick on each face, we'll make up a mandrel and we'll do the OD. Alright, let's get to it. Alright, we're over here on the small lathe now, we're just going to get this face squared up. It's a fantastic little tool. It's, uh, Face square rubber, I guess that's what you might call it. Let's give it a nip up on the doors now and uh, we'll set up, face it off, bore it, turn it around, face it, mandrel, and then we'll turn the OJ. So I'll bring you back when we've got all that done. Okay, so that's our thrust washer. And that's come up an absolute treat. So once again, that's done out of alley bronze out of that slit that we cut off that, uh, that larger section. Um, we'll pop the hole in for the uh, shaft and I've also drilled the hole for the sellet pin to lock the uh, spring and its washer into place. So we're just going to put all this together now and build it up and we'll see how it looks. Okay so there's our nut sitting up inside on the sellet pin and thrusting up against the, the plate up inside. Put the handle on. I've just uh, counterboard, drilled and tapped into the shaft and uh, Fitted that on, it's come up quite nice. Washer's on, we've got the spring and the washer and the new cellar pin in place. So now we'll just, uh, I might even give this a clean up actually before I start, it's quite uh, it's quite dirty then, we might, we might give it a bit of a birthday. Alrighty, we're all done and it's back together. So I've had this running full stroke and uh, there's no binding, very smooth action.
All right, we have a new addition to the workshop now working. So from a, a screw and nut that was absolutely roached out, um, as a, this vice was a throwaway, couldn't get spares. So uh, we've made one up and we've turned it into something that we can use. So very happy about that. Thank you.